take a look at how to complete the Lines A project. In this particular project, um, in Inkscape and in Krita, you will be tracing a still life in order to get better practice with the Bezier Curve tool. So let's first look at how to do this in Inkscape. Open up Inkscape and you will see this rectangle. Remember, we first have to zoom in to that rectangle because that's all I'm going to see when you turn in your work is what's inside that rectangle. The next step is to import the lines A picture that you're going to be tracing. So to do this, go to File, go to Import. Then it's going to bring up all of your files here. So go ahead and find lines A. Um, you should have downloaded that previously. So let's see if I can find lines A image. There it is. And let's open that up and take and move this onto that rectangular area and you can uh, expand that. All right, so this is your first layer and we're going to be working in layers so that you can get rid of this layer when you're finished because you don't want anyone to know you're tracing. It's a big secret, right? Okay, so we're going to take this layer and we are going to reduce the opacity of this layer so that you can see your lines a little bit better. So if you uh, notice in the layers panel, you'll see this opacity bar. If you do not see the layers panel, go to layer at the top toolbar here, layer. It'll bring this drop down and go to the very last one that says layers. The hot key for that is shift control L. So click on that and it will open this layers panel. Okay, so now we have a layer with our picture on it and we are going to reduce the opacity of that. You can use that with these um, arrows here or you can actually slide this bar over or you can type the number. So you have several ways. It doesn't matter. You find uh, how much opacity you want this reduced because this is about you and what you can see best. Somewhere around the 50s, somewhere in there is usually good. All right, so once we've done this, we are done with this layer and I'm going to click this small lock next to layer one. Now I'm going to make a new layer that we're going to draw on and we're going to hit the plus here to create a new layer. And we're going to name our layer lines. Add that layer. Now, because we've locked this, it's not going to draw on layer one. We don't want to have any lines on layer one because we're going to get rid of it. So make sure that you remember to lock that layer. So now once we get to lines, we're ready to start drawing with the Bezier Curve tool. Bezier Curve tool is located here on the left. It looks like a blue pen and has this um, square node on it. All right, so we're gonna click on that tool and then we are going to, you see this has, looks like a pen. Everywhere that you click, it's going to make a node. Now I can click and then just come over and click again. It's going to make a straight line. Click, come back down, come all the way through the orange because we're going to cover that up. Click, and then down here I want a curve. So if you want a curve, you want to click, but drag and follow that line. Let's see the handle that forms. So you can click and drag to get curved lines. Now, we can make a lot of changes to these lines as we go. Now double click to end, and there's your line. Um, we can change the thickness of this line, um, and we can also change the curve of this line. So in order to change the thickness, if you don't like the line or it comes up some funny color, we're going to use the fill and stroke panel to make those changes. If you don't see the fill and stroke panel like I have here, go to Object and then Fill and Stroke and click on that. Just shift Control F and that will give you this panel here. In order to change the line quality, I'm going to go to Stroke Style. Stroke is the line itself. This is your color. If I go to Stroke Style, I can change the width of that line um, by increasing this amount here. And you can see the line is getting thicker. All right. So um, now let's take a look at how we can change these lines and make them a little more curved. This is where we use the Edit Path by Nodes tool 
which is underneath your regular selection tool. If you click Edit Paths by Notes, it shows all of these little diamonds or square shapes that highlight red when I click over them. These are nodes. You want the fewest number of nodes possible to create your shape to get a smooth line. If I have a node that's a sharp turn like this and I want it curved, I can select that node, see how it's red? And I have all these tools up here to adjust my nodes. If you click this curve, make selected nodes smooth, and click on that, see how it adds these handles? And you can adjust these handles to create the amount of curve that you want. And the idea here, of course, is just to trace. And so if it's not looking like you want, um, also we don't, sometimes it wants to snap to things. You can turn that off if you want to. And we can curve this out. Okay. Um, let's take a look at how to create this curve across the top. You know, on the handle, same thing, go to your busy curve tool, click, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, close your shape. Okay, if you don't like that curve, remember edit path by notes and select your line and you can make adjustments here. Same thing for the handle. Complete the entire picture in this way and the spoon. Then we'll move on to doing the fruit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. If you have a node that you don't want, just click on it to highlight it and hit delete. If you need to add one, then you can just double click on your line. Once you have all these lines done, and mine are still a little bumpy, I can work on them a little more, but get the general idea here. Um, now we can go ahead and lock that lines layer. So we're gonna hit the lock on the lines layer. We're gonna make a new layer to do the fruit. So our new layer, we're just going to label fruit. And now we're going to work on these and we're going to, we're going to use shapes in order to work on these. Now I'm going to hide my lines layer that I did previously so that I can see what I'm doing better. And so I'm going to use this little eye icon and click on it to close that. It's still there, I just can't see it now. For the fruit, we're going to start with the ellipse tool and we're going to pull out an ellipse that's going to roughly cover our orange. Now right now, I do not want any fill. So this is where I go to my fill and stroke panel. I go to fill and I'm just going to click the X. That way I can see through that shape. I am going to come back in and fill it. Now notice my orange is not a perfect circle, so I'm going to need to change that. I can click on edit path by nose, but because this is a shape, I need to change it so that I can edit the path. In order to do that, you go to these node tools at the top and go to this one that looks like a figure eight. It says convert selected object to path. So we're gonna uh, click that. And now you'll see that these squares, have these nodes have turned gray. And now I can adjust those individually just like I would any other drawn path. This is often a faster way to achieve a shape than drawing it freehand. We're going to do the same thing with the pair. So click the ellipse, pull that out, click edit paths by nodes, convert object to path, and now we can stretch that and create that pear shape by adjusting these nodes. Now we're not going to have enough nodes with just four, so we're going to add some. Remember, in order to add a node, you simply double click on the line and another node is created. You still want to use the minimum number of nodes that you can possibly use, so try not to create too many, um, but enough to create a pear shape. 
Now that we have a pear shape, we're gonna go ahead and fill these with white because that's gonna obstruct the lines that are in the layer behind it. So we're gonna to go to fill this blue box and fill with white. If yours does not automatically go to white, you can select white down here along this panel on the bottom that has all these different colors, or you can use any of these color selectors in order to select white. Do the same for your orange. I also want to be sure that my line weight is the same, so all this looks like it was drawn the same. And I messed with my line weight before. This is 0.565, so let's make sure when we go back to the lines layer that everything is 0.565. Alright, so um, let's uh, add, before we do that, let's add the stems. I completely forgot about those. I can um, use the ellipse to create just kind of that little stem area on the top. Remember that I can use my selection click inside to rotate if I want to adjust that. Um, we can use the same kind of ellipse tool for just creating a stem here. And if I edit past my nose and do this. I can sort of stretch and adjust that shape. I maybe should have used a rectangle. But we can create kind of a, a stem shape here. So let's see how that looks. All right, that works. All right, so now we're done with the fruit. So we're gonna lock our fruit layer. We're gonna open up our lines layer. And you can see how those fruit pieces are now obstructing the lines there behind. I'm gonna go through and select my lines, but before I do that, I have to open it up. So I'm gonna unlock my lines layer. Always make sure that you've locked your layers except for the one that you're using. Now I'm gonna click on these lines that I've made. I'm gonna to go to stroke style. See that they're smaller? So I want those to be um, the same width as, as the others. So that's probably pretty good. I could still do the details in the spoon. I could do the edges of the table. All that's good, but I just want to show you how to complete this. It's, I forgot one piece right here. This one needs to be bigger. All right, so now we've done that. So the last step that we have to do is to get rid of that background layer. So watch if I close that eye, now you can see the finished drawing. Um, and I save it like this, and you save it, in this way and then put that file in, um, I'm not gonna see that background. Um, you can also actually go in and completely delete that layer. If you unlock it, um, you can just delete the layer by um, right click, delete current layer. So you can do that uh, completely after you're done as well. Have fun making your lines drawing and I look forward to seeing your work.